What's up guys, this is Void of This Gaming, your channel for fresh Arena of Valor gameplay. Today I'm not going to focus on a specific hero, um, you're going to see Thane in that video, but I want to rather talk about team compositions and uh, one of the easiest ways to describe it is how to make up the dual lane because this is basically the one lane where you've got the most impact on how the overall outcome will be. So. It doesn't matter if you are the AT carry or you are the support, but both of these roles can be picked um, with a good look on what the other hero is going to do. So, for example, if you have someone who isn't that mobile, um, may have difficulties to get away, you might want to take someone who's got some hard CC so that you can just freeze opponents in the lane, giving your AD carry some opportunities to just hit some shots and land some damage and of course it's always important to kind of strengthen what you already have instead of mitigating what you can't really do that good so you should always try to maximize the effort and in this video we are talking about Hayate and Thane um, I'm playing with Utopia that you guys might have known or might have seen in the Zill video that has been posted two days before. If you haven't seen it and you want to see some really nice gameplay f featuring Zill, you should definitely check this out. But in this case, he was picking the AD carry, he was going with Hayate, and I was choosing Thane. And that's um, a good reason why we picked this lineup, because you've got a really mobile hero. Hayate sports some great mobility, pairing that with great damage output coming from his spells and his passive where he is marking enemies dealing more damage um, coming up to true damage and I picked Thane in advance because I thought it might just be a really good idea to keep harm away from Hayate and if Hayate is jumping in I'm able to push enemies away from him so if he is opening with his ultimate or something like that I can make good use of my first ability which is basically some push and I can free him from harm and how this is going to proceed is part of this video so we are going to have a really quick run through my build uh, as you can see we're going with full tank you should always pick the support item um, when you know what the enemies are about to do so if there is a lot of CC of course you're going to get cleanse but in this video we are focusing on the barrier because the enemies are going to deal a lot of damage and we wanted to have barrier to get some shielding here the rest of the build is pretty much staple tank build we've got Aegis in here we've got the male of pain we've got some items against magic damage um, you would always take a look on how many heroes are able to deal magic damage and then pick the one that is most suitable and if there's a lot of magic damage you can take both so that's not really a secret um arcana wise i'm going with the the ad tank build that i come up with which is max hp around one uh, 800 it's consisting of 10 times indomitable i'm taking 10 times benevolence and i'm taking 10 times skewer just because I think Thane has not really that much damage at all and you guys are going to see how hard it is for Thane to get damage into the enemies even if he was buffed a little bit in the latest update with the patch 34 but it's not enough unfortunately you can't really uh, survive for yourself you can't really kill something by yourself you need assistance from other heroes and that's where your AD carry starts to shine so kill stealing is not really a problem but uh, I'm going to do something with my ult and it's not really going to be nice. It's going to be disgusting. Enchantment wise, I think the only thing that you can actually take is the explosive shield. It's going to tank you up a little bit more. We're taking the health regeneration um, enchantment here because it's going to help us with our passive. That's going to proc from time to time and the rest of it is. We've got Tower Blessing for some extra defense. We've got Devourer in here and I'm taking the Bone Cutter because let's stack it up nicely with your Gilded Greaves and then you're good to go. Resistance is there. You got plenty of resistance against crowd control effects and that's how I think Thane works best. But you guys are going to see for yourself in the upcoming gameplay right now. Let's go. All right, here we go. And it just seems that we don't really have an audio here. Oh yeah, now we do have one, uh, just by a little bit. 
but uh, yes you're going to, to hear some in-game sound which is actually quite nice so let's talk about the team composition quite briefly because this is going to be something which is quite impactful in big in that game uh, we've got Aram and uh, Thorn against us Thorn is going to be a pain or a thorn in the ass when we are hitting mid to late game because that is the moment when he really starts to shine after you've got some items and he can really shred through armor so I need to be careful right after that um, they've got Marja Marja is a hero that I've not be, been that fond of lately uh, that it changed my mind entirely because the last Marjas that I saw were actually really really good and uh, they were actually dealing a lot of damage and uh, that said Marja has a great opportunity to just enter fights or get out of fights by using her ult so she's a really like she's not difficult to fight but it's actually quite annoying to fight her uh, just used flicker so that's nice um, then we've got on our team at the mid lane position we've got Zata one of the strongest mages in the game I think even after the so-called nerf I don't really think that this has hit him as much as it should have been uh, we've got Lubu in the jungle a really strong jungler here and uh, then we've got Tachi up at the bottom lane so against omen um so what this is going to tell us is and we've got pain in the jungle as you can see so what this tells us is that they're basically their win condition is based on getting into the late game because they've got a lot of tanks there um i mean marja is not really a true tank but she can be quite tanky because of her skills she's got a lot of life gain she's got this crazy ult where she can just enter and exit fights the way she wants to We've got Thorn, who is going to be the main damage dealer of the enemy team. And with Aram and Tachi, I mean, even after they changed Tachi's layout with the latest update, he's still going to be quite tanky and being able to deal true damage. So we've got someone who is both being, being able to be a tank as well as a damage dealer. And this is going to show in the later moments of the game. So we need to be a little bit careful and uh, the only thing that really helps me to protect against all the incoming damage is my tankiness and uh, that said it's a really good thing that I decided to go full tank so now I'm shoving everyone into this wall I think that was the, the right chance and as you can see the, the, the composition works quite fine I'm going to put someone into obstacles or just pushing them away um, having some CC on them and then Hayate is able to follow up with his crazy amounts of damage and that was the strategy that we went for with this team composition or the dual lane composition and uh, I think the reason why I picked Thane if that is kind of like a question in your head is because he's so consistent I know that there are better supporters than Thane obviously we've got zip in there um we've got for example Krizix has become really really good lately um and all these sort of characters but the thing about Thane is that he is actually filling the role of a support tank as few other heroes can do in this game he's got the potential to be really really good at initiating team fights because he can just chop enemies around and the good thing is he will have the armor to just withstand the first initial blows you are not dependent on your ult your ult is basically just a really nice add-on like if if the ult hits something that's nice um but if your ult is not going to be on cooldown or if it's still on cooldown you are actually good to go because your main spell is your s1 the rest of it is basically it, it's nice it's decoration and uh, that's something where Thane is really really potent you've got a lot of health you've got the passive that's going to give you health back after you dropped um, under 50% and as you can see we really dominate the team fights right now we've got a great composition with me being up front and then Zata as well as Hayate dealing the damage if 
pain is there he can just jump in and ruin the day of everyone who is still alive and that's going to be quite beneficial for the game so we need to finish them off quickly unfortunately as you guys have already seen the game is going to be quite long so i think we defocused while we were playing the game um not really pushing too hard or not pushing hard enough but as you can see we are now having the first tower i'm going in uh, dropping my shield here and uh, there's a dead Aram after this scene and with ease we are going on a 12-1 and we've got the first tower and that's a good feeling so now the second tower is about to be approached uh, we've got one of the best split pushes in here so that shouldn't be a problem and I'm just trying to be really really aggressive with Thane always going in always trying to shove enemies either away from my team so that they can do what they need to do or on the other hand i'm trying to um, just set up gangs for them set up situations for them where they can start to enter the fray and as you can see it works out just nice it's it's just a really pleasure like a pure pleasure to play fane in such a team composition because you've got the you've got the damage and that's uh, you've got the health of course you don't have the damage You've got the health. Even when fighting Aram and Tachi, I'm able to get out alive. And now, I, after I've repositioned and I've resorted myself, I can get back into the game. And now we're going to see how I handle a basically full health Tachi. And as you can see, it's it's not really <clears throat> getting me into problems here. So Thane is really really beefy. Um, <clears throat> I think it's actually quite good that he's not sporting so much damage because that would make him quite broken. You've got crazy tankiness, you've got a crazy ultimate, uh, you've got a crazy passive that's going to put you in the position to just re-enter fights after you escaped. Um, and I guess if he would have had more damage, that's actually a nightmare for the enemies. So I think it's kind of good that the damage is not there but it's sometimes really frustrating if you are pushing by yourself without the support of any damage dealer because it just feels like you're doing nothing at all and we're going to see that later on in the game we've got one scene where i'm following up a hero and it's just like i can't do anything against them it's it's crazy so i decided to put myself between our team and tachi just to be there and prevent him from from doing damage um, positioning is key here heating up my team uh, Aram is about to be dead yes here we go onslaught and now I thought is it valuable to push into the tower um, but I did not really see that this was a uh, that this this tower was still standing so now we need to start fresh from the bottom mage tower is about to be dead in a short amount of time and because they only have Marja and Marja is not going to burst me down she's just dealing damage constantly over time I decided to go in with Gaia standard instead of the medallion of Troy I think it's a lot more beneficial and it's even adding up to the already powerful passive that we do have so we even get more regeneration so now we've got benevolence we've got the regeneration from Gaius standard as soon as it's going to be finished and we've got the passive so the healing effect is tripled and that's a really good feeling we're going to be full in a short amount of time i mean you can even put on the uh item that you're going to get health back after you re-entered a fight and now i'm just shoving the enemies around for hyatt to make a play and you can see how good this works uh as we just got another kill on those 20 versus 8 but this is the time around minute 9 where unfortunately thane is starting to get back into the game because now he's got some gold and now he's got some items as you can see he's got both buffs because he killed pain and uh of course that's not something that you want to have appeared but yes positioning wasn't the best unfortunately but we do get him down and now it's zata's turn and tiger's turn to drag the enemies away from the tower kill them and defend the tower and they can do that with ease oh it's not higher it it was um it was open they look quite similar 
because of this kind of long white hair. So I was mistaken. Unfortunately, Lubu deals a lot of damage. I don't know where that comes from. Like the, the enemies do not really have that much kills, but it, I guess it's Lubu's basic setup that he is able to deal a lot of damage to squishy targets. And now I need to go in and deal with those enemies. And as you can see, I helped my team out here. Uh, unfortunately, Tachi is able to get our pain and I don't know what this was all about. I think that Zata thought that he has enough damage to deal with Tachi but uh, yeah didn't turn out the way we wanted it to so now the enemies are actually coming back a little bit uh, and now we need to sort out and figure out what we are about to do to stop them in their tracks and make our game plan work because Time is flying by and it's really important for us to get back into the game and start to dictate them what we want to do again. So as you can see, uh, Thorn is playing a double, double slow um, health-wise damage consistent build on his ammunition. And of course this is going to be a pain for me. Again, we are just putting him into a corner, trying to trying to zone him out. Aaron comes in and uh, deals damage to me. Um, unfortunately, there is Thorn with a great positioning here behind the cover, and he's able to just kill me on the go, and I can't really do anything against him because I was trying to pin down Tachi here so that my team would be able to deal with him but as you can see none of the enemies were killed and unfortunately they start to have a little comeback here 24 versus 15 that has been a lot better at the beginning of the game and uh, yes we've got a really strong Lubu 6-3 is not the greatest score but it's enough for Lubu to make him work and just keep him in the game so that he's been able to get towers as well as kills and Lubu is a great split pusher at all um, so we need to be careful about that and as you can see they're just jumping in jumping in dealing damage but here comes Hayate and Hayate has even more damage so nice shutdown here uh, we do get another assist so 14 assists already um, I'm trying to work my way on to Marja and because we we both are in discord like it's it's a dual lane and we are communicating via discord we just decided to go for the abyssal dragon but unfortunately Marja went back into the fight um, and we just decided to just let it go like just leave the abyssal dragon alone because there's not really much that we can do against Marja harassing us all the time and uh, therefore we decided to go back because we had the feeling that the enemy team would just make an appearance and therefore without just um, risking being killed we decided to just say goodbye we don't need that abyssal dragon right now we need to consolidate our team fights we need to take the next best action and get the enemies and uh, here we go this is it as i said i'm playing super aggressively <clears throat> being suppressed here by Aram um, zoning the enemies away so I'm occupying two enemies at this very time um, trying to make my team get kills and as you can see there has been a triple kill on pain just because of this thing and now look at the damage that I'm dealing she's basically dead and now she got life back because of her spells and because I had to be in melee and uh, if not for Zata being there she would just have just walked out of the fight and been like oh, I don't care I've got health I can't I can't be killed um, so we've got a really good outcome right now and um, as one of my last items I decided to go with the shield of the lost to deal with the attack damage both from Lubu and Thorn at least that was the idea behind it and you guys are going to see a pretty miserable scene in a short duration of time and uh, it's actually quite sad because it, it's just putting this game 
on another scale when it comes about game length and uh, we are about to witness this so be prepared for something that should have been done or executed a little bit faster so as i said before we've got three tanks that we need to deal with so right now my basic approach is just to go back and regroup with the team unfortunately the the enemy has just been going in and dealing with another tower of us so right now i'm just pushing enemies away getting my fourth kill here i mean yes it was practically it was a kill steal but i really needed to make it work now we've got a really nice knock up on aram therefore we might just be able to push her out of the fight so that my team can basically um basically decide if they want to enter the fight or not and i just decided to go straight for dark slayer enemy team is basically down to no one and uh, i thought okay this might just be a good idea but wait for it because our team is pushing in hard for the for the very last tower and there is not even the tower anymore so we go in straight for the core we just redecided rearranged ourselves and uh, got back to the core and now we've got a dead tachi and now this is the time to shine i am pushing enemies away we're getting kills here thorn is the only one to survive there has been another kill for pain and i'm pushing this guy just far enough away so that we are able to make another entrance and now we do get another double kill just one person of our team is dead the enemy is about to come back and now i'm starting to chop down that tower and uh, i should have focused on minions a little bit more i guess because now my our minions are occupied dealing with the other minions and i even thought afterwards we discussed that on discord it would have been smart to just sell my items get for example devil's handshake um we just discussed that as well and get it straight for the tower because i could have ended the game here i guess it that was that was the one of the biggest mistakes and now i need to fight against tachi going into super armor but even with the help of Hayate, there's not really that much, that much that I can do against them. So now Hayate needs to stay focused, stays to... Yeah, unfortunately, he tries to save me here. But now he is not having his stack on his revive item anymore. And look at that. Look at that call. Such a pain to rewatch. We could have ended the game around 17 minutes if, if not for my mistake that I did not resell everything and buy damage items. Could have ended the game. That would have been so nice. Now we need to play even longer. And of course the outcome is about to be now pretty much open. I mean it's just one single attempt. And now they killed Zata. And now they are about to get onto our Hayate. And Hayate is super low. Like, look at the health. He is basically not non-existent. And it was so good that Omen was able to shut down Lubu. But unfortunately, Thorn makes an entrance and kills our Omen. So now we've got two kills on our side. The enemy got one kill on their side. And it's really up for the team composition that we decided to take in order to win this game. Four minutes are about to be played. How are we going to solve that? We saw that the tower was endangered here. So we decided to split here to get the tower. And I would say it's pretty fortunate that uh, Thorn is not here in order to deal with me so yes we lost the tower but we still got the defenses up so the only thing that's going to keep us from winning the game is basically the cause and i'm trying to get as much life for my team as possible thorn is being killed here and i think the mix of hayate and pain with all my shoving abilities were the main key to make it work so now the only person who's separating us from the victory is lubu keep an eye on slay was the call from our omen as you can see team score wasn't the greatest and uh, i don't know why pain is 
Yeah, Paint tried to push something, but now we need to focus on the Dark Lord Slayer because this is our main win condition. We need to get the Dark Lord Slayer in order to win the game. And there is an enemy jungler nearby, so this is going to be quite dangerous. But Paint finally makes an entrance. We do get the Dark Lord Slayer. I'm back into the game. Zata is back into the game, so we've got a full team fighting against a full team, but we've got the Dark Slain. Dark Slayer in lane pushing the enemy and now it just boils down to one single fight. Two minutes are about to be played. Are we going to win the game or are we going to lose the game because we just throw this one really important team fight? Um, I'm trying to be upfront, tanking some shots but as you can see Thorn is really 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 grinding my gears but I would say the overall approach of me going in and then pain following up straight is the win condition that we need to take but thorn is still standing so it's 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 about thorn getting killed or our team to lose the game and now hayate is trying to fight three people at the same time our team is basically dead i'm thinking about do i need another item to finish this game is it important to, to switch items here? And Lupu is at the heels of Omen, trying to break this hero, trying to get him down. And here we go. Omen versus Lubu. Who is going to be the winner of this fight? Omen has put Lubu in his ultimate, but he kind of refuses to fight him. So that was actually quite weird. Um, either go, put him down in the ultimate, or either go, or stay but don't do both it's kind of kind of difficult for your team to follow up and what my team now did is the basic key to this game they shut down both of the damage dealers so now Lubu is dead Thorn is dead so we don't have someone who is basically uh, getting the main minion pushing uh, or the main minion control so now we can finally start to whittle down the enemies i mean yes touch is trying to focus here but this is not going to be enough he's coming back he's been revived but as you can see we are already dealing damage i'm pushing everyone away out of the tower and we finally won the game <laughs> so as i said Thane is super consistent. It's great fun to play him because he's just a bulwark to play against. You you have a struggle to put him down. And uh, while the skin is not the most beautiful one, um, I'm sitting here on an 11.5 and I think it just shows how good Thane is in combination with Hayate. You can just push enemies away and Hayate can follow up and deal the damage. And that was great work. That was my video. And I uh, hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, a thumbs up would highly be appreciated. If you are not a subscriber yet, subscribe and hit the bell to not miss any of my videos afterwards. And uh, stay healthy, stay put, and have a good time on the battlefield. Bye-bye. Thank you.